Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My ex-wife left me when I was paralyzed, took my kids and spread lies. Now, 12 years later, my kids are finally moving in with me. I'm Jason, 47, and I need to vent and get some advice. This whole thing started 12 years ago when I was married to Susan, my first wife. We had been together for seven years and had two kids, Laura and Lucas, who were five and three at the time. Everything was pretty normal until one day, everything went sideways. So, one morning I was driving to work when this speeding car came out of nowhere and smashed into mine. Next thing I know, I wake up in a hospital bed, all bandaged up. The nurse told me I'd been out for two days. I was grateful to be alive, but that was just the beginning of a nightmare. After a week, the doctor hit me with the news I was paralyzed from the waist down and might never walk again. I was shattered. Susan was a wreck too, trying to juggle everything at home with the kids. I fell into a deep depression, stuck in that hospital room, feeling like my life was over. I was heartbroken about not being able to play soccer with my kids or dance with my wife. To make things worse, Susan started visiting less and less. At first, she brought the kids a few times a week, but then those visits became rare. I begged her to bring them around more, but she kept saying they didn't want to see me. Then one day, she shows up with divorce papers saying she couldn't live with a disabled man and deserved better. I had a feeling it was coming, but it still hit hard. A few friends told me Susan was seen around town with this middle aged dude and rumors were flying that she had an affair either before or right after my accident. It was only two months after the crash, and I was still in the hospital when she handed me the papers. I was crushed, angry, and totally lost. I was wheelchair-bound, broke, and had just lost my family. My savings were gone, used up for bills and the kids' education. Thankfully, insurance covered some of the hospital costs, but I was left with nothing. I was living with my elderly mother, who was struggling to support both of us. It was humiliating, being a 35-year-old man relying on a 62-year-old mother. When I tried to see my kids, Susan had already moved in with her new boyfriend, a wealthy guy with a history of failed marriages. She wouldn't let me see my kids and threatened me with a restraining order if I tried. I was devastated. She told me I was a burden, and that I should just go away. I was heartbroken and humiliated, but my mom was my rock. She helped me get through it, and motivated me to turn my life around. I joined her flower shop, and over time I saw its potential. I reached out to old contacts, secured some event contracts, and eventually started my own event management business. It took 12 long years, but I rebuilt my life. I never gave up, thanks to my mom's support. Last year I found out Susan and her boyfriend were leaving the city with my kids. I tried to see them, but they were already gone. I had been trying to contact them for years. But Susan always pushed me away and used her boyfriend's wealth and connections to keep me at bay. Even though I couldn't challenge her decisions or afford a lawyer, I kept fighting. Finally I managed to get joint custody and will have my kids, Laura and Lucas, for 15 days. They're now 17 and 15, and I'm both nervous and excited to see them. I know I can't make up for the lost years, but I want to make the most of the time we have together. I'm worried about what they've been told about me, and whether I should share my side of the story. Any advice on how to approach them or handle this situation would be much appreciated. I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate this and reconnect with my kids after all this time. I missed two critical pieces of information in my original post first about my current wife Amy. Yes, I remarried a beautiful woman five years ago. Amy is an interior designer, I met her at an event where she was designing the wedding venue, and we were providing the flowers, I was yet to start my own company at that time. It wasn't love at first sight, but we vibed well. We kept meeting for such events in the next few months and became friends. She was a single mother of a three-year-old daughter. The idea of starting the event management company was hers because she worked for one of the companies for many years and had the contacts and knowledge of the business. I partnered with her to launch the business. We dated for a year before getting married. Now we live as a happy family of four, Amy, her daughter Mia, my mother and I. Her daughter was delighted to get a granny, and so was my mother. The second information was regarding accident compensation. I was hit by a speeding truck. So ideally I should have been compensated by the logistics company, owning the truck. But at that time, the company got away with paying nothing by manipulating the facts about the accident and pinning the blame on me. I could not hire a good lawyer back then so I didn't get a penny. You know how big companies work. They pay in bombs to their attorneys to save their backs. After my marriage with Amy, she suggested I refile the case since we could afford a suitable lawyer. The case is still in court, but my lawyer has given us a positive hint that the judgment would come in our favor. Alright, coming back to my story. As I mentioned in my original post three months ago, my children were supposed to visit me after 12 years of my divorce. I was excited and nervous. But Amy calmed me down and supported me all this while. I went to pick them up from the airport. The elder one, Laura, is 15 now, and the younger one, Lucas, is 13. They have grown up to be beautiful and handsome teenagers. After the initial greetings we ran short of conversations. It was awkward for all three of us. 
On our way to the house from the airport, I tried to break the ice and ask them about their school life and city. I deliberately skipped the conversation regarding their mother. They, too, didn't bring her up. The children were unusually silent or maybe looking for an opportunity to plug into their earphones, like any other teenager. Upon reaching home, we were welcomed by Amy. The children looked shocked as if they didn't anticipate this coming. I don't know why Amy was a surprise to them. When her mother could live with another man within months of our divorce, why can't I remarry? Amy had set up the guest room for the children. We had lunch together, and Amy laid out the vacation itinerary we had planned for the family. They gave a neutral reaction to everything. Neither were they excited nor did they dismiss the plan. Amy and I were confused by their mixed response. They locked themselves up in their room, and soon after that I got a call from their mother Susan, accusing me of tricking our children. She said I'd brought the children to my house so Amy and I could manipulate them. I felt disoriented by her behavior. She accused me of hiding the truth about my marriage. I wondered at her accusations. I hung up on her, but she persistently called me. I decided to address the elephant in the room. I called my children and asked them what was the matter. After the initial hesitance, they spoke up. They were mad at me because it was said to them that I had abandoned them. Susan had brainwashed the children against me and had filled their heads with all lies and deceit. I revealed to them the exact truth that it was not their mother jumped to another man as soon as she got the opportunity. They were kids back then, yet they remember those incidents very well. I told them how Susan disappeared with them to the old man's house and how she had threatened and chased me away whenever I tried to contact them. I showed them the restraining letter and all my rejected pleadings I made to meet them. They were in tears and regretted believing in their mother's lies all these years. My younger son, Lucas, admitted that once, he tried to reach out to me on social media, but Susan caught him. She emotionally blackmailed him and took a promise from him that he would never contact me again. The children also admitted to having been rebuked by Susan's husband. Susan and the children were mistreated at the family gatherings because they were unmarried. Susan continued to stay as a mistress in his house. Although the man paid for their education, he was never a fatherly figure to them. My heart ached as I got to know about my children's adversity. After all the truths came out, we hugged each other and cried our hearts out. We went for a week-long vacation in Florida and had a great time together. Laura and Lucas bonded with Amy and Mia, who was turning eight this year. I couldn't be happier seeing all my family together. My children uploaded our group photos on social media, captioning them happy family. As soon as Susan saw those photographs, she called them up and berated them for their foolish behavior. She blamed them for betraying her by bonding with us. She texted me, threatening that she would not let me meet my children further if I did anything to turn them against her. I laughed at her hollow threats and continued with our happy family time. I'm proud to say that Laura and Lucas will be living with us until they start their college. They have already enrolled themselves in the local school and are excited about their new life. Susan showed up at my office last week. She asked for my forgiveness and was bitter about my new family. She tried to sweet-talk me into getting me back into her life, but I made it clear that Amy and Mia were my real family. I also told her that I wasn't going to play along with her guilt-tripping and manipulative games anymore. Susan's current partner abandoned her because of her unreasonable demands and manipulative behavior. Her new relationship ended, and my children had cut all ties with her. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.